Sechaz Yivam Estav Samach Ches contains two primary sugyas. The first sugya is the Gemara's attempt to explain the Mishnah. The Mishnah had listed a number of situations in which some one or some thing apostles a woman from eating truma and does not give her the ability to eat truma through marriage. One of the things on the list was a boy who was nine years and one day old. The Gemara wants to understand what did the Mishnah mean by that. The Gemara has two attempts to explain that. This will take us into the topic of a woman who is puzzle to kahuna, to eating truma, and to marrying into kahuna. The Gemara will want to know what is the source of that halacha. Where do we find it in the Psukim? The Gemara will show the source for both of those and as to how they apply to a Levia and a Yisraelis as well. So let's begin. We know that halacha is that a Bas Yisrael who is married to a Kohen gets the right to eat a truma because of her marriage to a Kohen. And a Bas Kohen gets the right to eat truma because she's the daughter of a Kohen until she marries the Yisrael and she loses the right to eat truma because she's part of the Yisrael's family. Now, that is referred to as the ability to eat truma based on marriage. That's a Bas Yisrael to a Kohen. And the losing the ability to eat truma based on marriage, that's a Bas Kohen to Yisrael. Now, Gemara said that a boy who is nine years old and one day apostles her both ways. He, if he's a Kohen, he does not give her the right Truma. And if he's a Yisrael, he takes away her right Truma. The Gemara wants to know, what are we talking about here? What are we referring to? What is the case? How does he do that? So the simplest understanding, the significance of being nine years old, as far as a boy is concerned, is that the beer that he could do counts as a real beer. Younger than that, it doesn't count as a beer. Older than that, it counts as a beer. That's significant. Because in the Sugya of Yibam, if he's a Yavam and he does Yibam, so then it counts as a real Yibam. So the Mars question is, okay, so that means that the Pashas are talking about Yibam here. Talking about Yibam, that means that we're saying that a woman who uh, falls to Yibam, so if her Yavam is a boy who's nine years old in one day, so if she's a Yisrael and he's a Kohen, so he does not give her the right to eat Chuma. If she's a Kohen, he's a Yisrael, he does take away her right to eat Chuma. Because she's still falling to Yibam. She doesn't go back to her father's house to eat room from her father's house. The Mars question is that this has nothing to do with being nine years old. It's true that a Zika to anybody, even a Katan, less than nine years old, takes away her right to eat room from her father's house. She doesn't get to go back to her father's house because she still has a Zika to a Yavam who's Yisrael, even if he's not nine years old. And if he's a Kohen, it does not give her the right to eat room, just through Zika, even if he's a gadol, even if he's an adult. So what is the significance then of nine years old? It has nothing to do with anything. The Gemara offers two approaches to deal with this question. The first approach is Abaye. Abaye says we are talking about Yibam, but we're not talking about a Zika to Yibam. We're talking about where he actually did Yibam. Generally, if you do Yibam, so if it's a gadol, so it counts as a Yibam, and she, if he's a Kohen, so he now gives her the right to Yichuma, even though she's a Bas Yisrael. However, the Rabbanon said that if he's a katan, even though he's nine years old, he doesn't give her the right to truma. We count the beer of a katan as a mimer. We only count it as a mimer, and therefore it's not a real marriage, and therefore he does not give her the right to truma. And that's the only thing the Mishnah was saying. The Mishnah was not saying that if she is a bas kohen and the yibum of a nine year old takes away her right to eat truma, that it doesn't do. Um, but it was just saying that the, the Chiddush was that even though he's a Kohen, he does not give her the right to eat Shuma from being nine years old and above. Now, the Gemara asks on this, and this is Rava. The Gemara says, so then how does it make sense, the last phrase in the mission that said, if he's a Suffolk, if he's nine years old or not, maybe he's nine years old, maybe he's a day younger, we go to Chumra. What do you mean? Even if he's a katan, he still doesn't give her the right to eat truma. Kavachomir doesn't give her the right to eat truma. Whether he's a katan or even if he's nine years old, until he's a gadol, he doesn't give her the right to eat truma. So why do I care if he's less than nine years old or more than nine years old? How is that a significant suffix? Either way, the halach is the same. What's the mission talking about if I have that suffix? A katan, for sure, his bia doesn't count, and he doesn't give her the right to eat truma. A nine-year-old, his beard doesn't count either. It's all the same. It's not until he becomes a gadol. So that can't be a shot of the Mishnah. So therefore, Rav gives his own shot. Rav says, we're not talking about Yibam at all. We're talking about the beard of a nine-year-old who is a puzzle, who she's not allowed to marry. He is a 
Ger Amayni Meyavi Mitzri Adayim Mikusi Nesin Cholum Mamzer. Any of these who has beer with a Kohenes apostles her from eating Truma. And she has beer with a Levi or Yisraelis apostles her from marrying a Kohen. She becomes a Cholol and she's not allowed to marry Kohen. She's not allowed to eat Truma. So it's coming... the. What it means to tell me, what the Mishnah means to say, is that a boy of that age now creates a psola she can't eat truma anymore. Younger than that, she could eat truma because his beer doesn't count. That's what the Mishnah is saying, and uh, therefore it makes sense. There's a suffix, if there's a suffix, whether he was nine years old or not, I need to know. Now, the Gemara's kash on this is that our next Mishnah says this halacha. The next Mishnah says that if the Kohenes has a beer to a... Uh, Puzzle that puzzles her from eating truma. So, what do I need this mission for? The like Gemara says, no, they're both talking about puzzle. One is talking about a puzzle kahal, one is talking about a puzzle kahuna. That's one is uh, talking about where the beer that she had was she's a kohenes and she's marrying someone who is puzzle to kahuna, puzzles her for kahuna. Um, the other one is talking about where it's someone who's an iser for all of Kalyasa, okay? Mamzer, Nesin, Amoini, Meavi, Mitzri, these are all apostles for all Yisrael, and that's what that's referring to. So, therefore, you need both of them separately. Okay, now the Gemara discusses, from here to the end of the Daph, the Gemara discusses the halacha of the Bia of a puzzle that apostles a woman to Kahuna. So, the Gemara first brings a brace on the subject. The Gemara says, a Bia of a nine year old is old enough to count as a Bia, and apostles her, apostles a woman to Kahuna. Kahuna, if he is a ger, a meini meyavi mitzvah, then mikusi nesin chalo mamzer. Any of these, if she's a kohenes, apostles her to eat truma. If she's levia or yisraelis, apostles her from marrying kohanim. Now that's the opinion of the Tanakama. Now the Gemara quotes two more opinions, which it does not explain. The Brisa quotes two more opinions, which the Gemara will not explain on this stuff. It'll have to get to later. Rabbi Yosi says anyone whose children are apostle apostles his wife. Anyone whose children are not puzzled, don't puzzle his wife. Rishon Megam Leo says, anyone who you can marry his daughter, you can marry his almana. Anyone who can't marry his daughter, can't marry his almana. Cryptic statements, how are they arguing? How are they any different than the Tanakama? The Gemara will explain those later. Now, the Gemara now, though, wants to know what is the source. What is the source of the halacha that a woman becomes puzzled by a bia to any of these psulim? So, the Gemara is going to go through the sources it's going to use psukim, which their simple pshat is talking about a different halacha, and the Gemara is going to reorganize what the psukim we're referring to to call to try to get a few extra drushos out of it to learn that any bia to these psukim possible. So the three psukim we will use are as follows: It says bas kohen kisil erzar he b'chumas akachim lo sechal. Simple pshat that means a woman who is a bas kohen. When she's single, she can eat truma. When she marries the Yisrael, she does not eat truma as long as she's married to him and she's part of his household. That's a simple pshat. The Gemara will say Zar doesn't refer to Yisrael. Zar refers to a puzzle. The next pasuk is a basko and kisia almana ugrusha vezera ain lava shava beis avia kinureha milacham avia tochal v'chol zar lo yochal bo. Here we have the first part of this is it saying that a basko who was married to Yisrael and lost her to truma, as we said in the previous pasuk, once she gets divorced or Almana widowed from him. She goes back to her father's house, and as long as she has no children, she can eat from again from her father, who's a Kohen. And then it adds in a phrase, lo that any non any non Kohen is not allowed to eat Chuma. And we have the third pasuk, which we will bring, which actually appears earlier in the parsha, and it says, lo yochabo. It says generally that a non Kohen is not allowed to eat Kodesh, which refers to Chuma. So the verse is we're going to learn these speaking as follows. First of all, what is the source that a Bas Kohen, who has a Bia from a puzzle, that she cannot eat Truma anymore, she's puzzled from eating Truma forever after, even if she's not a Grusha, even if she's not a money, but she's not married to a Yisro. So that's because it says, Ubas Kohen Kisiel Ish Zar, which we interpret to mean a Bas Kohen who has a Bia to a Zar, to a puzzle. Then she no longer has the right to eat truma. She becomes a cholol. She cannot truma anymore. So that's not what that pasuk means. That pasuk is coming to teach me something else. Like we said, the pasuk shot, and that is, is that while a regular bas kohen is married to a czar, to a yisrael, a kosher yisrael, she doesn't have the right to eat truma because she's part of the household of yisrael. Her father's kohen status doesn't help her at that stage. So the says, no, that can't be the pasuk shot in the pasuk. That's the pasuk shot, but it can't be the correct shot. 
It goes I could see that from the next passage we said. It says that once she becomes divorced or widowed Vashavel Besa via Kinurel, then she can go back to Ichuma. That clearly shows that up till now, while she was married to a Yisrael, she couldn't eat Chuma. So this passage can't be referring to that. So the says, no, not necessarily. The passage could be referring to that and it's telling me that it's a love. You just told me Vishava El Besavia, that's an assay. She can then go and do that. We learn out a lav by inference from that. That's what's called a lav of which has the status of an assay. That's an Isra assay. Here we want to say that it says, um, Lo Sochel, she should not eat. That's a lav. So we'll therefore go back to the Pashub Shat, that the Pasik of Baskar and Yisiel is talking about a. Regular Baskarin married to a regular Yisrael. So the Mara says, No, I don't need that for the Lav. The Lav I could learn from the third possibly we said. It says, V'chol zar lo yochal kodesh. That makes it into a Lav. She has the status of a Zar as long as she's married to a Yisrael. So therefore, my original Cheshman is correct. So the Gemara says, No, that Pasuk you cannot use to teach that a Baskarin has a Lav. That Pasuk is talking about a regular Yisrael. It's not talking about a Baskarin who's married to Yisrael. So you, it's not available for what you said. So the Umar says, well, it appears twice. We have the Pasuk of V'chol Zar twice. It says, V'chol Zar lo yochal kodesh. And, after, and it says, V'chol Zar lo yochal bo. The second half of the Pasuk about the Bas Kohen says, V'chol Zar lo yochal bo. So we have two Psukim. One is for the regular Zar. The one is for the regular non uh, Kohen, that is. And the other one is for a Bas Kohen who's married to a non Kohen. Sigmar says, okay, but there's another thing that we need the Pasuk for. Both Psukim of Lo Yochal are needed. One is to tell me that a non Kohen is not allowed to eat Shuma. The other one is to tell me that a Kohen who is an Onain, a Kohen who is a the stage before mourning between the death and the burial of a close relative, he is allowed to eat Shuma. And that's from the fact that it says Vachol Zar, and we say Drasha uh, Rabbi Yasi Bar Chanina. Only a czar, only a non kohen is forbidden to Truma, but an onin is permitted. And that's why we have the Pasuk twice. Again, not for what you want it. The says, no, that I can from the fact that it has v'cholzar. The word v'cholir is actually, that's to include, that's to exclude anybody else. It's only a czar who can't eat, but an onin could. But I still don't need two psukim for that. So the existence of two separate psukim, one is for a czar, one is for a Bas Kohen who's married to a czar, and therefore the Pasuk that talks about the Bas Kohen is extra. We're going to use that for the Psul, like we said. So the Gemara says, no, because I need, I need it for something else. I can't, you can't use Vachol Zar for that, because we, uh, well, you can't, it's not Vachol Zar, we can't use the second Pasuk of Lo Yochal for that. You told me you're going to have two Psukim of Lo Yochal, I need the Pasuk of Lo Yochal, the second one, for something else. I need it for the fact that when a woman, who's a Bas Kohen, leaves her, Ashes, leaves her husband, who's a Yisrael, either through uh, divorce or death, she goes back to eating chuma, but she does not go back to eating chaz shok. She doesn't go back to eating the parts of korbanos that are given to kohanim. That she could eat as long as she was single, but when she's a widow or a divorcee, she can't go back to that. Where do you see that? That's from the fact that it says, Abbas Kohen Kisil is Zar, he bichumas kachem lo socha. That's the second pasuk that you quoted. Bichumas kachem lo sochel. So therefore, you use the pasuk for that. So again, you don't have to. Psukim. So Mar says, no, I do have two Psukim. That drasha is not needed, the entire Pasuk for that. All you need from that is from the fact that it says, Betshumas Kajim. Chumas Kajim, Chuma is an extra word. That teaches me the halacha that she only goes back to Chuma and she doesn't go back to Karbanos. But again, I still have an extra um, Pasuk of Lo Sochal, and therefore I can use it to uh, one for the Zar and one for the uh, HS Zar. And I have therefore an extra pasuk to use for so. Okay, so the Gemara says I'm good with that, but this is all talking about a Kohenis. What's the source that a Yisraelis or a Levia who was married to a apostle can no longer uh, eat truma anytime afterwards or marry a Kohen anytime afterwards? So the Gemara says the source would be like a Joshua of Rav Abba. It says. Ubas Kohen Kisiel Ezar. Why do you have the extra vav in Ubas? That's to include uh, Levia and Israelis as well. Whereas so that's good according to Rabbi Kiva, who learns Joshua's head of extra vavs, the vav Achibor, the vav Hamosef, but according to the Rabbanon who don't, what are you going to do? 
So the Gemara says it's not a problem. The entire word Ubas is extra. Where it says Ubas Kohen, you see the Zara, it doesn't have to say Ubas. We're in the middle of talking about Ubas Kohen. You just say, and she. The fact that it says Ubas is extra, that's included via and Yisraelis. So the Gemara says, okay, that's good for teaching me that uh, she can't eat truma. How do you know she can't marry a Kohen? The Gemara says, what do you mean? I don't need to teach you she can't eat truma. Ubas Yisraelis and Olivia never eat truma. What does they have to do with truma? And the entire thing is to teach me that they are puzzled to Kohanim, to marry Kohanim after they have beer from a psal. Sigmar says, what do you mean? There's a situation in which a Yisraelis and a Levia could eat Chuma, even if she's not married to a Kohen, which obviously has to be what we're referring to, because we're saying that she can't marry Kohanim. The, the situation is where she has a child who's a Kohen. She was married to a Kohen. She has a child from a Kohen. She has a right to eat Shuma. If now she's Nival to a puzzle, that child no longer gives her the right to eat Shuma. She has a soul. She cannot eat Shuma anymore. So I can be referring to that. Someone says, okay, you're right. So I need a different source for... So therefore, the Pasuk I was discussing up to now is the time that she can't eat Shuma. I need a different source that she cannot marry a Kohen afterwards. And the source is going to be a Kavachomer. It's a Kavachomer... From a Kohenis, a woman who is a Kohen herself. We said that a woman who is a Kohen herself, if she has nival to a puzzle, she can no longer marry a Kohen. So a Levia or a Yisraelis, who don't have any innate Kedusha, certainly uh, they do not have an innate right to Yishuma. Certainly, if they have a Bia to a puzzle, they become a puzzle from marrying a Kohanim. So the verse is no, the logic goes the other way. The, the soul apostles of Kohanis because she has Kedusha. That's why her soul, her, that's why her Bia to Apostle apostles her. Because it ruins her because she's more sensitive. She has an extra Kedusha because she's a Kohanis. Olivia and Yisraelis, who have no innate Kedusha as far as Kohanim are concerned, are possibly not ruined by a Bia to a soul. So the verse is we need a different Kavachomer. The Kavachomer is from a Grusha. A grusha, a regular uh, Israelis who is a grusha, she's allowed to eat truma, but she's puzzled to marry a kohen because she's a grusha. So this woman who is not allowed to eat truma, when she's nival to a uh, when she's nival to a puzzle, we already said she loses her ability to eat truma. Certainly, she should not be allowed to marry a kohen. So the Gemara accepts that, but the Gemara says that's not a warning. The Torah there is can't be warning me through that. You cannot. Warn us not to do something with a kavachomer. But it was you're right. The Torah is not warning you. This doesn't count as a warning. This is just a gilu milsa. This is a revelation that this is the halacha. There is no explicit warning. But we see from here that the halacha is that she's not allowed to do that. Okay. Now there's another question. We have these joshes are all fine and good. However, what type of puzzle are we referring to? There's different types of psalm. There's a psalm that's an Isra Lav, and there's a psalm that's an Isra Kares. So how do you know that we're talking about a psalm that's an Isra Lav here? Maybe we're only talking about a strong psalm. A psalm that's an Isra Kares, that's who puzzles her to Truma and to Kohanim. How do you know they're talking about a Lav? Someone says, no. If you look at the wording of the Pasuk, it says, it had said, Kisia, Basko and Kisia le Ishzar. So that's that's the puzzle that we used, right? So if it's kisia, sia is from the word havaya, which refers to kedushin. Where there's a tfisas kedushin, where there's a marriage that's chal. There's only a marriage chal on an iser lav and iser There is no chalos marriage, and the word sia would be inappropriate. The says, okay, so maybe it's taka true. Maybe this soul only happens from a chayvi lav. Maybe a chayvi krisis doesn't puzzle her. The says that would not make sense, as we have a. A uh, different statement of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Yechonon brought in the name of Rabbi Yishmael. How do you know that an Eved Kichavim or an Eved passel a Bas Yisrael to Kahuna with their Bia? Because it says, Ubas Kohen Kisia Almana Ugrusha. That means that the only time that a Bas Yisrael can marry a Kohen. And we can therefore apply the pasuk that when she'll become an amana or grusha, she goes back to her father's house. The only time that can happen is if there's a possibility of amana or grusha. There's a possibility of her being an actual amana or grusha because she was married. There was tisas kedushin, and she became an amana or grusha. However, chayve uh, krisus that have no tisas kedushin, she can never be an amana or grusha. Therefore, the pasuk of basko and kisia doesn't apply because she never can marry. 
those uh, Kohanim because a psal is created by this Bia which doesn't leave her as an Amana or Kusha, that of an Eved or a, a, a guy.